These are Pika screws, and these are some of the most unique fasteners I've ever seen, and they helped me design a floating shelf one of a kind. If you want to learn how to do it, keep on watching. Let it start. There are numerous floating shelf videos out there, however, none of them are fastened directly from the front. And that's what I wanted to utilize on this project because I wanted something extremely strong but easy to install. I also wanted a solid wood shelf with no framing needed, which is why I went with a 2x6 solid white oak. This particular piece of white oak is S4S, which means it's surfaced four sides, and all I need to do is cut off the ends to the appropriate length. The real star of the show is this guy. It is called a Pika screw, and it's an ingenious screw system that I found on TikTok of all places. The screw itself has a spring-loaded center slot that is nearly invisible to the naked eye and needs a magnetized special driver to screw it in or remove it. And the moment I saw these screws, I knew I had to incorporate it on a future project. And this is a perfect application for it because I want to secure these eight inch long lag screws on the the back side of the shelf, but I don't want the unsightly lag screw to be seen. In order to accommodate this feature, we first need to figure out where our stud placements are located. I'm placing this shelf right below our TV, and luckily the TV itself is centered right in the dead center of our stud placements. If it wasn't, then our screw placement might not be aligned properly, which is a big factor when we want to make sure that each one of these screws is centered appropriately and eye appealing. There are actually six studs that I could be hitting on this one shelf, but I decided to only hit four, two on each side. So I do take a measurement to guarantee I know where dead center of those stud placements are, and then transfer those to our shelf. Our stud fastening points on this application is at three inches and 19 inches on both sides. One key measurement is to actually guarantee that you have the perfect dead center point for each Pika screw because you're going to be able to tell one way or the other if that screw is slightly ajar up or down. So just make sure you have the dead center of each location. I want to pre-drill our holes for our fasteners and in order to do so and make sure it's perfectly straight, I first clamp it down and take this quarter inch long drill bit, but I'm also using a guide to guarantee that the drill is going through straight or at least as straight as possible. You do have to back out the drill bit numerous times when doing such a very long straight hole, so just make sure you're doing that every inch as you're penetrating the wood. As you can see here, that stepped guide really does do a great job of making sure you're going down and going straight all the way through the wood. Not always guaranteed to be that perfect, but that was a nice one. As always, if you are interested in purchasing any of these tools or materials seen in this video, I do have a link in the description box below of this video. So please check that out if you are interested since that does help support the channel. After I have all four fastening hole locations pre-drilled, I grab my router with a one inch diameter straight bit and center my router directly over the hole that I just pre-drilled. I clamp down the router on both sides to guarantee that this router wasn't gonna move at all once I turned it on. This is a plunge router and you're able to precisely and accurately note exactly how deep you want the drill bit to go. By taking the measurement from the very front of our Pika screw to the very back side of our T-nut, which I'll be installing later, it's a half inch exactly, and that's exactly where I had our drill bit set for the depth. Once we had all four of our one inch diameters routed out, I then moved on to our quarter inch router bit. Now this is also a straight bit and I'm basically doing the same exact thing that I did previously. However, I'm going even deeper. This is an additional one inch all the way through the dead center of each pre-drilled hole. And as long as your router is clamped down appropriately, this is actually quite easy and straightforward as well as very secure. The real time consuming part was just trying to figure out the appropriate depth needed for each individual router bit. But now that I figured that out ahead of time, hopefully that saves you some time on your project. Now that all of our holes are pre-drilled, I do always suggest doing a double check to guarantee that that fastener is flush just the way you want it. I'm placing a T-nut on the back side of our Pika screw, and that's going to hold our Pika screw perfectly in place and flush right up against our wood frame. 
I'm sure there are other items out there that I could use other than a T-nut screw, so if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. But keep in mind though that whatever the Pika screw is actually screwing into also needs to be removable because the fastener behind it needs to be removable as well. With this circumstance, it worked out perfectly and it still holds the Pika screw extremely well. We can finally move on to sanding and I go from 150 grit all the way up to 220 on this entire board. I've taken on many woodworking projects that involve hours and hours of sanding, but luckily on this project, since it is S4S, it took a very short amount of time to sand down this board properly. After I have the entire board sanded down, I do grab a soft sanding pad with 220 sandpaper that I used previously and just sanded down all the edges smooth. This gives you a really nice buttery smooth finish, which goes a long way with the overall finished feel of the piece. Prior to applying your finish, I do always suggest grabbing some mineral spirits and wiping off any of the dust or debris on the surface first. This is a simple and straightforward process that I find makes a difference when applying the application of your finish. After I have the entire board wiped down, I do let it dry approximately 10 minutes and then go over the entire surface with a tack cloth just to guarantee that I'm getting as many of the dust and debris particles off this board as possible prior to finish. It's now finally time to move on to finish, and for this project, we're going with Natura One Coat. This is a hard wax wood finish, and it's a two-parter, therefore, it's a three to one mix ratio where I pour three amounts of finish and one part hardener into a container, then mix it up very thoroughly and apply it as needed. Since this shelf is going directly into a family room, I didn't want any type of smell associated with the finish, and that's why I went with this one because it has zero VOCs, and it was a two-part component oil for durability and strength. I apply an applicator pad to my random orbital buffer and go over the entire board thoroughly. Now this is a product where you do want to let it sit for approximately three to five minutes, but be rest assured you want to wipe off any excess shortly thereafter due to the fact that this is a two part component and it will harden on you quite quickly. So make sure you do your deal diligence and wipe off right after you apply it. I let the finish soak in overnight and then come back to it the next morning, ready to be installed. There are a number of ways that we could go about the installation process, but on this project, I decided to place the board exactly where I want it to be placed first, using a table, some bricks, and a few shims to guarantee that I have proper levelness as well as exactly where I want it to be placed. Now that I have our shelf pinpoint accurate, I can then start pre-drilling my holes into the stud locations. I suggest pre-drilling one hole first going all the way through into the stud, then vacuuming up any of the debris and securing our long 8 inch long lag screw. Once I secure one side of the shelf, I then go to the opposite side and secure that side as well, just to guarantee that everything is lined up appropriately before I make my way to the two screws in the middle. And as for screws, these are Timberlock by Fasten Master. Now I've used these on large retaining walls, which is why I know for certain they're extremely strong and durable. With all four fasteners in place, I became very confident in the strength of this shelf because I could easily stand on this and I would show you that, but it's for someone else and I don't want to stand on their beautiful shelf. Especially since it's now time to install our Pika screws. I thread the T-nut onto the back side of our Pika screw and insert it directly into our hole. Once it's placed there, I then start hammering the back side of our driver and that actually fits it very nice and snugly into place. Now you might need to take it out a bit and just drive in that T-nut a bit more to make sure that that screw is as flush as possible. But as you can see here with a simple twist of the driver, you can easily remove or reinstall each Pika screw as needed. I'm so amazed by the ingenuity and creativity of some creators, and Andrew Klein, the creator of the Pika Screw, is truly one of those individuals that I'm quite impressed with. Check out the link in the description box below to see this amazing invention or any of the other items that he's come up with over the years. I find poking these Pika screws alone is extremely satisfying in one project that I'm so proud that I was a part of. Very strong and durable shelf 
that is unique, innovative, and different compared to a lot of other floating shelves. And that's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast of a floating shelf. Oh yeah, 